right now they're not taxing and spending, they're printing and spending. You're really paying higher taxes. And taxes, unfortunately, are going way up. But we had a totally different CPI in the 1970s. If we were using the 1970s CPI today, we would already be experiencing double-digit inflation. Let's face it, between gas prices and the grocery bill, excess money for fishing gear is only going to diminish in the near future. But fishing isn't going anywhere. And luckily for us, it's only as expensive as you wanna make it. Now, if you're a psychopath like me, you have enough fishing reels for five lifetimes. There is no need to buy another fishing reel ever again. And that terrible economy won't impact your ability to access fish. However, if you're new to fishing or looking to finally get serious about the greatest activity on earth, you may be in a bit of trouble. You may have to settle for less, but maybe not. What if I were to say that Walmart and their Ozark Trail brand may have your back during these times of extraordinary inflation? Today, we're gonna to take a look at the Ozark Trail Saltwater Resistant Spinning Reel, or OTS WWRSR for short. For the rest of the video, let's just call it the OT Reel. Now, they could have actually given this reel a really cool name, but literally spelling out what you're getting is another strategy, I guess. And it's very characteristic of buying anything that is store brand. I have to confess, my expectations for this reel were actually quite low. At the humble price of $55, you can expect the basics and few thrills. But this OT reel has one incredible feature for being a budget reel, and that's seals. I mean lots of seals. Like I'm talking more seals than what are found in very expensive reels. Now, when I did a quick count of the Penn Slammer, it was about 12 seals, and then the Ozark Trail has 13 seals. Imagine for a second going to a Ford dealership looking for a base model work truck. The car salesman approaches and points out the boring white paint, ugly steel rims, and manual seats with no lumbar support. Then out of the blue, he turns and briefly mentions, oh, one more thing, I forgot to mention. It has the same suspension and drivetrain package as a Ford Raptor. Excuse me, come again? Yeah, you can take this thing off jumps. This is essentially what's happening with the Ozark Trail reel. The OT can be fully submerged like the wildly more expensive Penn Slammer 4. Now, I tore this thing apart and the seals check out, and they are all positioned as they should. They were serious. Now the seal material on the slammers looks to be a better material, but what's in the OT looks perfectly up to the task for a number of seasons. This truly is mind blowing. I counted 12 seals in my slammer and there are 13 in the Ozark Trail reel. Chew on that for a second. Now another indication that Ozark Trail is taking the design very serious is the presence of Loctite 243 on the threads. Loctite is normally a requirement on higher end reels and often absent on budget reels. This may in part be due to the fact that the OT is using a lot of metal components and fasteners. Cheap reels are typically heavy in the use of plastics and graphite where Loctite may not make sense. Now while we're on the material science topic, I'd like to highlight that the OT has a metal body, spool, and handle assembly. In all respects, it's built like a tank for a $55 reel and this is not very common. Due to the magic of free market competition, budget reels are now braid ready. This includes the pin pursuits, the tsunami barriers, and of course the OT reel. This is like the automotive market where we see flat screens installed in cheaper and cheaper cars. What I'm trying to say is that it is a good time to be alive when it comes to fishing. The fishing gear just keeps getting better and cheaper. We keep getting better and better features. Hey everyone, coming here from post-production, I can't believe I forgot to mention how nice the bearings are. I mean, for a budget reel, look at these bearings. They are phenomenal, and they damn near look like something out of high-end pen reels. Um, they're sealed, they look well-built, uh, it really is quite incredible. All right, back to the video. Another thing I like is the drag system. Two out of the three synthetic washers are the cheap felt, which are typical in the budget class, but at least they throw you one bone, and that is in the way of a lone carbon fiber washer. In the comparable pin wrath, you get only cheap felt, which isn't the best for durability and smooth startups for hard fighting fish. To me, the single carbon fiber washer is like the slight improvement and the backup should the two felt washers fail on a hard fighting fish. The comparable pin pursuit four has two carbon washers and no felt, and fewer total drag washers. Now, 
I didn't like the proprietary tool that came with a reel. It didn't work well, it is cheap, and I bent the hell out of it. I much prefer reels that only need commonly used tools found at your local hardware store. This also adds unnecessary costs for the manufacturer, so to me it doesn't make that much sense and I consider it a design flaw. The OT is a classic example of a product being over-engineered to the point of frustration and complexity. The thread directions are different from one component to the next. Let's just say that righty tighty doesn't always hold true on this reel. Let's just say that righty tighty only works part of the time on this reel. Some threads were right hand and others were left hand for basically the same components. This is mind boggling from a maintenance and engineering perspective. The most frustrating design component is a little piece of black trim called the rear cap holder. This little part made reassembly quite difficult. It didn't really seem useful. It kind of seemed like more of a uh, design feature, not really functional. It should definitely be eliminated. Although I think the design is cumbersome, it is unique and it definitely works. Also, the manufacturer was clearly serious about making the reel waterproof and ready for war. The instructions state the reel was designed to be extremely durable. That checks out. There's a lot of metal and it's a pretty solid design. It features 13 internal seals. These seals create a water resistant guard to keep water out under normal conditions. They do warn, however, that turning the reel while submerged will allow water ingress. So you're good to dunk this reel. Just don't turn it while it's underneath the water. So overall, if it is a cumbersome design and it is over engineered, it, you don't really care. That's more of a burden on the manufacturer. This is, you know, over engineering usually means a very durable reel that lasts a long time and that you can beat the heck out of it. My final gripe is the handle ergonomics. Simply put, the handle is too short and too close to the rotor. Pin has literally perfected their handle design in comparison. It is so much more comfortable in my opinion, though certainly not a showstopper. This is simply me just conveying a first world problem. It's just, it just it doesn't feel as like smooth and efficient as say the pins. And I'm sure there's some physics behind that. Maybe longer uh, moment arm, I don't know. In summary, this is a lot of reel for a cheap price. And the design has left me utterly stunned at what you get. Between the completely sealed body, carbon washer, Loctite, and several metal components, this reel is ready for inshore battle and should last a long time if taken care of. I love seeing high-end features and low-end reels, especially in this economy. Now, is this better than a $250 saltwater reel? Absolutely not. Materials and craftsmanship is more important at the end of the day. Higher-end reels are just executed better, even though they may lack certain features that a budget reel might have on it in terms of quantity. However, if you're budget limited in this current economy, fear not. You can roll down to your local Walmart and hang with the best of them with your Ozark Trail saltwater reel and your Ozark Trail cooler and catch just as many fish as your Buddy standing next to you with all Yeti gear, pin, and Shimano max to the nines. Just because a piece of equipment isn't executed perfectly doesn't mean it can't be 100% functional and put fish on the board. This is just the kind of market pressure we need to elevate the low end reels and better serve the fishy market. All I can say is well done Walmart and the Ozark Trail brand. As always, thanks for stopping by. Make sure you get out and go fishing. Happy 4th of July and we'll see you all later. Bye. Now the Ozark Trail saltwater reel will come in the typical annoying plastic container but it does come with some spare um i guess they're spool spacers and then here's that proprietary tool and you can see that i just bent the heck out of it and how that happened was and this little feature here is terrible it, it doesn't get good grip um it just this tool wasn't executed well at all and the fact that like one side plate is righty tidy and the other side plate on the opposite side is lefty tidy um it's very easy to damage this reel if <laughs> If this is pissing you off and you go and get a uh, standard wrench and you're trying to like open the side plate thinking that it is lefty loosey but you're actually tightening it because all the threads are jacked up so just be advised that if you're like putting a lot of pressure on a component on this reel and it's not budging try going the other direction because it's counterintuitive